Today we're going to be talking about generative art in Python, specifically how you can code your own generative art, your own script that produce generative art using the Python language. So before we start looking at code, um, I want to first start with what generative art is and some of the basic principles behind it. So generative art, sometimes known as procedural art, is basically the idea of combining a bunch of rules that you have set out with inputs that are coming in in some form. And so the generation um, is really the uh, combination or you know the product of all the rules that you've created um, and how these new inputs that are coming in deal with those rules. So an example of uh, generative art or procedural art is say that every Tuesday at 7 p.m. you are going to go outside and take a picture of the sky. In this case, the rule is going to be that every Thursday or every Tuesday at 7 p.m., you are going to go out and take a picture. The input to this art would then be the sky. You can't really know what's going to happen uh, or what the sky is going to look like, but you do know what the rule is going to be, and you do know how that input is going to be translated through your rule into some output. Now this is a very simple example and one that I wanted to pit put forth first because it shows a very specific point and that is that not all generative art or procedural art um, is technology related. It really is just the idea of combining some rules with some inputs that are happening. In this case, you are the one that's actually executing um, that rule. And so it's completely unrelated to technology if we you know, factor out the, the camera is involved in this. But now let's take a step forward and think about um, what happens when we do add that technology component into it, um, which is how a lot of people usually talk and think about uh, generative art. So in our last example, it was just one person going out um, once a week and taking a picture of this guy. That's pretty doable. That's like a reasonable amount of work for one person to do. Um, but we can imagine that when you add code in uh, and run it on um, sufficiently powerful machines, you can really increase the scalability and breadth of the possibilities for you. Um, so now an example of this might be you want to generate a color for every word in the dictionary. Um, now that's something a human could do, uh, but it would probably take a long time and I'd imagine it'd be pretty boring and so I don't know if it would happen anytime soon if ever finished. Um, so here the rule would be to generate a color and then the input would be dictionary words. So looking at the rule and the input we can see that the total space of possibility here is the number of colors in whatever color space you're using um, and then if you were to add something simple like maybe instead of just showing the color, you're going to have the color on the word. Um, now you have colors times words, uh, which is much, much larger um, than just this one person taking a picture. Um, and also, because you're running it on a machine, you could reasonably finish that. In my own art practice, I utilize a lot of generative tools and techniques, um, ranging from C Sharp and Unity 3D to Python and built-in libraries like we'll be seeing today, and using all sorts of different data sets like um, classical paintings, unsplash photography, fashion photography, all of these can be used to um, diversify your inputs, um, make your rules more interesting, and eventually create very novel and large potential output spaces for your art. Okay, but enough about me, enough about uh, generative art, let's get to the code. For this example, we're going to be generating squares on an image. Um, if you've been following along the channel, you know that I like to use this as a uh, example for how to get started in different tools and technologies. It's easy to understand and it's really easy to get started. In this case, the rule here is going to be generating squares um, and the things that we're going to be modifying, the attributes are going to be the location of those squares on the image as well as the color that we're going to present those squares in. And then the input for this is just going to be random. Uh, this is something that's pretty common is to use random as the input because you've now essentially increased your inputs to be the entire range of numbers that is produced by your random function, which is going to be way higher than any other kind of input that you would originally have. And so that's a really good, easy way uh, to keep your outputs very interesting, very diverse, um, and to have a really, really large potential 
problem space or potential output space uh, for your art to, to come out in. All right, so let's jump over to the code editor and kind of show you um, what's going on. So here's a example I have pulled up here um, of what we're gonna be outputting. You can see that we have a lot of just different squares um, over here uh, that are in different locations, have different colors, um, and it's just kind of put on a black background. Um, very simple, um, but we can see how there's a lot of variation that we could add here. So let's go through some of the other things or the other outputs that I've created. We can see that there is some variation um, here, but they all have the same similar rule and layout. Um, and, you know, just to make sure that I'm not cheating, uh, let's run our little generator. Uh, real fast a few times just so you can see that it's being output um, so here we can see that I'm getting new files here two three six here's some new ones um, they're not in order they're just using UIDs over here but uh, we can see that we're producing new ones um, and that this code is actually working um, Cool, so let's talk about how this works. Uh, for me, I'm using Docker um, in order to install all my dependencies, deal with my Conda environment, uh, which is just a Python virtual environment, um, and then actually run my Python scripts. Uh, I just do this for portability and I really like it, but this is not really necessary for you. Um, you can just uh, likely install Python on your system and you know pip install um, pill here and you should be good to go. So let's talk about the code and exactly how it works. So the first thing that I'm doing here is just importing some Python native packages, the random package and the UID package. Random just gives us access to get random values, which is very useful um, in generative art procedure art, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and UUID is just used to get a unique ID, um, and I'm just using that for the run and the file's actual name to make sure we don't have collisions or anything. The next thing that we're doing is importing uh, some useful libraries or um, I guess these are probably classes uh, from PIL. Um, PIL, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is an image library um, that is well supported in the Python uh, universe. Um, and these are just some useful ones uh, that we're pulling off of it. The next thing we're doing is we're going to be creating an image. Um, we're using this image uh, module from PIL and just creating a new one, RGB, um, so the red, green, blue color space, and then just setting a width and height here. Um, we then just grab the width and height off of the image, which we don't actually need to do because we set it here, but um, that's OK. Um, here we will set the rectangle width and height so 100 100 this is how we're getting all the squares to be um, the same size uh, and then we're gonna figure out the number of squares we want to create by calling that random on a random so anywhere from 10 to 550 is what we're going to be drawing um, and then here's a pill specific thing we're basically getting a drawable version of this image um, and we pull that out into its own variable. You'll notice that we draw uh, onto this drawable image, but we only end up saving uh, the original image. Um, so that's just a little oddity of pill and how it works. Um, but here we end up uh, actually creating the squares themselves. For So for every uh, square that we wanted to create, remember this is the 10 to 550, um, we're just going to find a location uh, somewhere within the image uh, size that we want to start drawing that rectangle or that square. Um, and then we will create the shape. Uh, this is just the XY coordinate um, on one side and then another XY coordinate to kind of bound the um, rectangle itself. You only need two points in order to create a rectangle. Um, and now we're just going to call the rectangle function on draw image. Um, here we fill it with our random colors. So this is how we're getting that second axis of uh, freedom, which is the colors. And then at the very end, we're just going to save it to that run ID that we created earlier. And that's how this works.
So yeah, that should get you started with um, some generative art in Python. Um, I'll have this code available on my site so you can go and download the source if you want. Um, that'll be linked in the description. Uh, let me know if you wanna see other generative art things like this or if there's other tools or libraries or languages um, that you're interested in learning about and uh, I'll take a look at them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.